Hi again, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with Mac, our company mascot, as well as John Welch, who's our development manager and vice president. Uh, and today we're here to talk about T-SQL versus SIS. Now, this is usually a, a boxing ring kind of, kind of approach to this, but there's some pros and cons to both of these, isn't there, John? Yes, there absolutely is. Now, so in this debate here that we're going to have, John's going to take the role of a T-SQL developer, I'll take the role of an SSIS developer, and then we'll see just kind of the pros and cons. We're both actually right in the big scheme of things, though. Right. They, they definitely both have their place. A lot of it's just understanding what's the most appropriate place to use it. Well, cool. Let's go to the whiteboard and kind of have the pros and cons then. All right. Sounds good. All right, thanks. So, John, I am ready for my SmackDown view on, <laughs> on T-SQL versus SSIS. And actually, you're, you're, you're in both camps here also, so um, we'll come back to that in a second about <laughs> well, when to choose which one. But I have my mace out. I'm ready to go. All right, so <laughs> let's get started. So uh, tell me about the pros of, of T-SQL. This is the constant debate you find in the ETL world of when I do SIS versus T-SQL and those kind of things. So tell me about uh, what you mean by learning curve here. So learning curve, um, if I'm doing ETL, I probably already know SQL. Um, in fact, if I am going to be doing SSIS, I still have to know SQL because yeah. I still got to interact with the databases. I still need to understand what it is I'm writing to. So why not just learn SQL and be done with it? Why, why have to stack on an additional tool on top of that? Okay, you see that. Uh, as far as my side, of course, you know, I would argue that I teach SIS classes, and that might, you know, for pragmatic works, that might be useful for learning learning curve. But let's say you already know SIS. Um, to me, a lot, a lot of the, uh, the advantages of SIS would be the readability of it. And you're, not, you're, of course, not arguing you know, way better here. You would like SIS as well, but the readability of SIS over T-SQL is much, much easier. I can hand a very extensive SIS package to you, and after you know, 10, 20 minutes, you can kind of get the general gist of it. If I, however, if I hand you 500 lines of code in T-SQL, you might spend you know, half a day trying to figure out what in the world it's doing. I had one customer send me 7,000 lines of code and said, can you tune this? Yes. Uh, and, and you probably had that happen also. I have. But the, the flip side of that is it's certainly possible to have the SSIS packages that are fairly unreadable as well, those, those larger ones. It is, it is. But the nice thing is, as you do this, if you are like, doing aiming conventions and you're doing annotation to package, it does become self-documenting over time, which is kind of nice. Uh, so set-based, tell me what you mean by that. Well, uh, T-SQL and database engines in general are optimized around doing set-based processing. So and by set-based, you mean set one big old fat update statement. Right. I am able to perform a operation against an entire set of rows, and if the engines are optimized for that, they can do it very quickly. Okay. So things like, um, a, like you mentioned, updating a, a set of rows, inserting a block of rows, um, being able to sort and order rows very quickly and efficiently. Uh, try to want to sort in SSIS, it yeah. tends to be painfully slow. I can do the same thing in a database generally much more quickly than I can do in SSIS. Absolutely. So on the SSIS side, of course, it streams data out, which is all fine and dandy, until you do a bad practice, like dragging an aggregate transform over or a sort transform over. But in general, the streaming process of taking the data out of in insert source here, bringing it to memory, really makes it perform very, very well. Mm -hmm. so if I have a whole stream of, of uh, operations I'm doing, even though I'm not set-based in many ways, uh, it can be much more efficient in some cases. Let's imagine, for example, I have, I have 30 business rules. And over in T-SQL land, you're doing that through staging it, a staging table, and then they're doing 30 update statements. And you have millions and millions of rows. That's going to cause a lot of I.O. thrashing. Where over here, I take data out of the source, I do 30 kind of drive column transforms or whatever that component of choice is, and I, when I land the data, I land it once. So it ultimately will be lower on the I.O. cost because of that in some cases. Now, the downside of that, of course, is there's some row-by-row -row operations, like you mentioned, that are basically the equivalent of being cursors, like right. the OADB command transform. Yes. Okay, so what's our next item? Well, uh, SQL, um, T-SQL is in the database. So I'm able to not move data around quite so much. Uh, with, with SSIS, as you mentioned, I can stream data out, but I'm having to pull it out, put it in a, basically a different memory space. Mm -hmm. If I you know, save my, my file or my data out at any point in that stage, I'm really basically ending up persisting a separate copy of the data. Whereas in the database, I can basically keep it all in the database. Um, the other advantage of this is I'm really Again, leveraging the fact that I'm operating in SQL and I can set things up 
to take advantage of the power of the database engine. And with SQL, the, the T-SQL language in particular coming along so much in 2012, um, there's things like the windowing functions that I can right. take advantage of where I can do transformations on my data actually as part of my select statements that, you know, a few years back we would have thought, oh, there's no way you can, right. you can accomplish this in an efficient manner. Especially the merge, the merge syntax in T-SQL. That, yes. that, that helps tell, tell things like type dimensions and those kind of things. It's really nice. The thing I like about SIS, though, is it's database agnostic and server agnostic, right? So I can have, I have a server over in, a, in, in Wyoming and I can be streaming data out of it transforming it in memory and then landing it to DB2 or SQL Server or Access Database, God forbid. But you can stream it out anywhere you want, DB2, and it's, and it's really uh, the type of database agnostic. It treats a file file like it treats a database right. uh, once, you, once, once you get the fixed data types and all that. Uh, <laughs> all also, those modern details. Yeah, but this is all fine any of the data is already in database, but what if it's in a flat file? What if it's in Excel right. or Access or whatever? Well, you, can, you can still get to those. Using T SQL. Uh, that's, that's a true. little bit more complex. Yeah, Principal C large stuff. Uh, so we both wrote down performance. Now we, we had some, some fun discussions about this. What what do you mean by performance? Well, there's as I already mentioned, there's many operations that are just faster to do directly in SQL. Uh, if I want to order a set of rows, it's almost guaranteed faster yes. than SQL. Um, doing bulk inserts, um, in a lot of cases, if I'm not having to do a lot of transformations on the rows, I can do a bulk insert using BCP or something mm -hmm. like that, direct into my SQL Server engine. Uh, don't even need to involve SSIS, and I will get better performance. Okay, and I, I wrote performance over here as well, because if I do have transformations, that, that's the caveat in my case. If I do have a lot of transformations, or even a few transformations, that same bulk operation will be faster in SSIS. So in those kind of operations, I can, I can read it out, Transform it and bulk it in with that old DB destination. So as long as that fast load is turned on, that is, <laughs> uh, the transformation properties in a slash be much, much faster. So those are some of the things. Now there's lots more, of course, inside of this. Oh, and, yeah. and John and I really agree. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we wrote the pros and cons each for arguing kind of both ways here. But really, it comes down to one more thing, right? And, and we wouldn't be good consultants at some point. We would say it depends. Exactly. And yeah. <laughs> And this is, it's a lot, it's a lot more to this. this is for proper training and knowing when you watch tools and not getting so passionate about SIS or T-SQL where you can't see the value of the tool right. comes into play. The, the best solutions tend to come from a combination of both. Right, right. So as you're reading data out of the source, maybe in, in uh, SIS, you do your joins, you do your order buys in the OLEDB source, reading it out, streaming it out, already transformed. And then you do some additional transformations against the sort of database and you land it. Maybe right. it's combining all the solutions together. Cool. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I think that covers it. Well, okay. uh, again, uh, lots more that we could talk about, but it covers it pretty well, pretty well for uh, the scope of this discussion. <laughs> yes, and we do have a lot of training classes at Pragmatic Works that, that can help you kind of make those decisions as well. We have a master's SIS class and a regular SIS class as well. Uh, but please also add your comments to the blog post that you're on right now and let us know what, the, what you think of the pros and cons as well. Just don't mention the word PowerShell and transformations. <laughs> so, all right, well, until next time, thank you again, and thanks, John, for joining me.